right. Well, we are super excited, Brandon, to have you back with us. Um, yeah, just excited. And as we are just moving ahead, um, even as a church about to hop into a new series on really what is the church? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think in, in all of this is we're constantly as we're gathering to, um, right, to worship on Sundays. But then part of this, this space even here is that we want to, um, just help one another be equipped and yeah. and dig deeper and ask questions. But, you know, I think there's something with that, I think at times, and I'd love for us to maybe just dialogue and dig into this because there's times where when we, when we look at scripture and we're setting that kind of as our foundation, sure. um, but there's yep. these other elements around that help and form. Um, but I think it's sometimes based on who we are, we either don't know what to do or like what we're <laughs> allowed to do. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. and so how would you kind of help uh, as we're looking at this series? And I know we've done this at often with series that said, hey, here's here's where we're going with God's word. And here's some other kind of like supplemental resources that help. Yes. But how do we balance this, right? Digging into God's word yes, and also holding these supplemental resources where they may be helpful. They're not God's word, but sometimes there's this tension of like, well, can I read this? Can I not read this? Do I listen to this podcast? Do I share this? What does it mean when someone, you know, can you, yeah, so what are your, are your uh, thoughts on that? Um, well, it's a great question. Um, I'm glad to be back. It's, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, it was a good three months on sabbatical, oh, yeah. but uh, no, I'm, I'm glad that we're back. I'm glad that we're doing this series, especially on the heels of Easter. You know, yeah. um, I think uh, I'll have the series real quick and then we'll kind of get into the, um, the question itself. I think there's a lot of confusion out there like uh, as far as like the value of the church hmm. and the place of the church in our world. Um, it, it's kind of become fashionable even to say like, oh yeah, well, the church, like, or not not our church, just the church, the that church, there is yeah. like a yeah. kind of a side eye suspicious thing. And, and yeah. we're actually going to be talking about that uh, the first week of this series. We're going to talk through some objections. Um, but like steering that, you said something I think was really helpful, steering this in answer to your question. Um, we say that the word of God is our foundation. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to build up from that, mm. not ever replacing it, not supplanting yeah. it, not yeah. looking to contradict it, yeah. but like, where do we go to get at these other resources? How do we, how do we talk about that? How do, how yeah. should we think? Um, that's such a great question because I think um, there's a couple things at play there. Um, one, I don't, I don't think you have to be a, a cultural analyst to, to look around and go, there is more content and information out there right now than there has ever been. There's more mm. books being written, more podcasts, yeah. more, I mean, let's be honest, more YouTube videos like yeah. this one. Yeah. Um, there's more stuff and um, probably, and not only is there more of it, that's the first piece, but um, it's more accessible yeah. than, than ever. You know, I mean, two clicks away from somebody saying something with an opinion and they're probably saying it really well maybe you know and and you listening to it consuming it like that's mm. i mean i could just pull up my phone i could be on youtube in you know yeah what eight seconds i could yeah. be watching something that's feeding me something so there's those two things at play mm. um that are not dangerous but things you have to be aware of is the volume of content that's out there and then the accessibility of mm. that content yeah um, and so I think those two things kind of raise the stakes a little bit as far yeah. as engaging other resources um, outside of God's word. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I'll, I'll park there for a second, just because I think those two things we gotta you gotta acknowledge that before we even really go any further. We 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 um, when we do these series, we did one this last fall called Holy Sexuality. Yeah. And um, that was one uh, I, I felt, I know you do too, um, there's this tremendous burden of going, I want to equip anyone who attends the North Canton Chapel with tools for understanding that this conversation is a whole lot more than just throwing a Bible verse in somebody's face. Yeah. Um, and so equipping is the idea there, that there's there's this equipment that I must learn how to use. There's tools that I have yeah. to learn how to wield well and so we created these things that i like i call them a virtual bookshelf they're basically just a yeah. list yeah. you know um and we're going to be doing that for this series as well um for like how should we think about the church so anyway all that's like my my intro as far as how yeah. how, how we think about it um 
That doesn't answer your question though. So throw throw it back out at me again a little yeah. bit more and we can Well, we can and wrap. I think even as you're talking about, right, you use this word tools and we've used these, this idea of equipping. And so yeah. I think there is something about needing to know, um, right? If, if God's word is our foundation, I think, and it's the filter of saying, okay, with these other things, they're not, um, Right. These these other elements are not like the thing. They are mm -hmm. a thing. And mm -hmm. right, a tool can be used at a specific place mm -hmm. at a specific mm -hmm. time for a specific purpose. Oh, great. But it's great. not it is not everything. Yes. And so this is coming from the dude that yes. like uh right, can't even watch a little video on like how to change okay, so like cars, <laughs> whatever it is. Okay, I just know like that's not how God has skilled me. Like we made a joke, like you want me to render motion graphics and after effects? Sweet. You want me to change the oil in my car? Like, no way. Like little uh, like Yeah. And so it's one of those where like using the tools in the right way and yes. knowing their purpose where I couldn't. Like you say, give me a like a, a crescent wrench that's a thing right <laughs> isn't it <laughs> it is a thing yes those right. those exist in garages and toolboxes yeah. but so what you're saying there's really brilliant because you're being thoughtful about it and you're what you what i hear you saying is whatever tool you use it whatever tool you're using use it for a purpose use it intentionally use it thoughtfully use it like you know acquisitionally is the is the, the bigger word maybe like why am I doing this thing? Why yeah. am I reading this book? Why am I listening to this podcast? Yeah. That I think is where discernment starts. Mm. So like when you read the book of Proverbs, Solomon says these things to his son. Um, like he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. And he gets, he get, almost like he start before he launches into the book of Proverbs, he has like speed bumps that he hits and he goes, I, I got to slow you down first. Like before I give you yeah. the content, before I open up this fire hose of 31 chapters of yeah. I got to make sure your heart is in this right. I want to make sure you're thinking, why are you picking up this tool? What 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 are you go about mm -hmm. to do with this? So there's this very introspective heart level, you know. I'll give you an example. Um there's a really popular podcast that came out I, I think it's probably been over a year ago now um that made its rounds in the Christian circles and it had to do with some you know, kind of culturally shifting things in evangelicalism, you know, and it was, it, it, I was hooked on this thing man. Mm -hmm. and like episodes were about an hour. And I remember sitting out in my garage, like in my speaker next to my crescent wrench, <laughs> see what I did there um, with my little Bluetooth speaker yeah. and I'm just sitting there going, wow, I'm hooked on this thing. And after a while I got to the point where I'm going, I feel like this is just like salacious sizzle for me. Mm -hmm. And I felt my heart getting twisted and I felt myself mm -hmm. getting bitter and I started to look at even our church a little bit differently in a way that was not kind and not good. And I'm going, all right, pause. I need to pull myself out of that. And what it revealed to me was like the content may be great and it was well produced. Like they yeah. had great speakers on there. Like it was, it was good. But I remember going, I am, this is not helpful for me. This is not nurturing my relationship with the Lord. And so even before we even buy the book, listen to the podcast, watch the movie, whatever. I believe that the godly preparation is to slow down and go, okay, is this going to nurture my my fear of the Lord? Is this going to nurture my relationship with him? Um, or am I, why am I doing this? What am I really getting at? What am I hoping to use this yeah. tool for? Am I, am I, is this tool going to become a weapon? Hmm. And I, I think that's still good because even so you talk about, I think sometimes our, right, our fleshly instinct is to assume maybe because the Holy Spirit brings this to light in our life, that that is truth for every other person. Oh, yeah. And so I think that's what's hard. It's like, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Dude, and I think there were there. those that listened that, that's okay, great. this didn't lead me into bitterness. Yeah. And I think it'd be easy to say, well, because this is what Jesus revealed to me, that this led yes. me to this place that's yes. not good for me then we instantly want to assume, well, that's for everyone. And I think that's some of this tension of yep. like when we're sitting and saying, right, search me, oh God, right, and know me, try me and see if there's anything that's not good in me. We should Great. all be asking that. Yes. But I think we do need to be be cautious in assuming because maybe the Holy Spirit has convicted me. Like I think there's there's clear things in scripture where it says this is right, yeah. sin. Yeah. And then there is some of this where it's like, if this causes your brother to sin, right? Paul talks yeah. about this. And, and so I think that's even it. something, but yes. I think so often we want to take, well, because you read this book yes. that for me may not have been healthy, may not have been good. We want to assume that, okay, 
because the Holy Spirit spoke that to me, now I'm somehow an agent. I need to speak that on behalf of everyone else. But I, but I think we get this. It's yes. like, and it's hurtful. somehow we we insert ourselves in the place of defender, when, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. No, the Holy Spirit's the one that convicts. And obviously there's balance in this in relationships. Yeah. But I think talking about content, because we we all think we have platforms, we think that everything that Jesus says to us, he said we need to say else. to everybody yeah, else. Yeah. And, that's, and, you know, and so I think there's that balance with that of like, A, no, we don't have to. And B, also, just because we have a platform doesn't well, mean everyone there is entrusted to us. So. You're so spot on with that. And I think th- this is getting is getting deeper, maybe than I anticipated, which I like. There's some there's some free there, there's 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 a freedom in feeling like when I either read a book or, or listen to a podcast mm-hmm. or engage a resource, or for that matter, when I engage engage the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit uses that tool to convict me. Mm-hmm the experience as a regenerate converted Christian hmm. ought to be, okay, I welcome that conviction. It's it's what you prayed just a bit ago. Like, see if there be any yeah. offensive way in me yeah. and lead me. Like, that's what we ought to do. But a lot of times what we end up doing, even as a regenerate converted person, we take the spotlight and we look for the closest person we can shine it on and go, I don't want to feel this anymore. And so I got to tell you how you, yeah. right? And um, all that we're doing there is two things. Well, there's probably like a bunch, but the two that come close to the surface for me is I'm robbing myself of what the work that the Holy Spirit wants to do in mm-hmm. me. And then I'm robbing myself of the actual benefit of community with you because mm-hmm. I just turned you into an object when I when I projected my convictions on you, not how that works. So let's get back to something you said a bit ago, though. Like when you said, like we we here take the word of God as our foundation, right? Yeah. So my mind goes to Paul's words to Timothy, where he says that the word of God, like we have been given the word of God, yeah. is breathed out by God and is useful, right? It's, there's there's that yeah. tool, yeah. right? And he goes that the end of that the end of that verse is that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Mm. So what that means is like everything that God's called you to do, he's given you the ability to do based on what he said here. And so those other resources almost become like translating tools, Mm. like supplemental tools, secondary tools. They don't ever replace the word. They can't do that. Um, They are often easier to hear. They're often easier to digest. They are often, I mean, this is a, a weird word, but like they're sexier. Okay. They're more appealing. They're yeah. more salacious. Like, yeah. and they're meant to be that way. And this sounds really cynical, but like, okay, before a before a publisher is going to agree to publish a book, they're going to ask the question, do we believe this is going to make any money? <laughs> right. Yeah. Before yeah. you sit down and watch a YouTube, before a public, you know, before you sit down and yeah. make a YouTube video, even what we're doing right now we're asking, do we think people are going to watch this? Right. And so there's a projected interest. And so there's, there's attention given to make this thing good. God's word is that one thing, right? It's, it, it's living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And it's, it discerns these things in me that like, I don't like it to discern, but it's good for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we say like the word of God is our foundation here, that's what we mean. Um, is that like, this can do things that, all those supplemental resources, as wonderful as they are, still fall short. They they hold it up, they explain it, they interpret it, they help us. There's still something missing if 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 you don't have the word of God as like yeah. that primary resource in your life. So how do we hold that? And so looking at right, what is right the church? And as we as a church set mm-hmm. ourselves around God's word, um how even in that, how do we hold like the the messiness of those nuances? And for some mm-hmm. of us that maybe um, we don't even realize how much maybe culture has drifted where it's so like mm-hmm. you have to fully like pick either side of the pendulum. <laughs> um, and, yes. and and even think we see this where, where it drifts in instead of like, we're, we're okay to say like, this is our same foundation, but maybe mm-hmm. like the layout of what is yes. being built up Yes. looks a little different and how do we hold some of those nuances and be great, okay with like the mess question. of like is that how the church is supposed to be that like okay this is our foundation but mm-hmm. right 
you and I are a little different in some ways and right the and right with the different ministry and different things like yes. that. Like how, how do yeah. we sit with that? Or maybe for someone who's listening that's wrestling with that because they're mm-hmm. saying, well, I'm I'm looking for a church, but it has to cross off all these. Is that right? Is that yes. wrong? Wow, um, great question. Like there are um so I give you one statement I've heard recently that I really do like, and then um, I want to give us a grid that I've used with others. We've talked about this here at the chapel that um, many people have said or just has been helpful for them. And so um, we're going to contrast two types of people, people who are maybe liberal by nature and people who are legalistic by nature. Okay. Um, liberal seeks to make um, black and white issues gray. Hmm. legalist seeks to make gray issues black and white. Hmm. And so like, we're not, we're not trying to deconstruct everything and make everything gray, but we also can't come up to this point where I go, okay, for, for a church to be a biblical church, here are the 194 things that it must do. And we're going, okay, you just became a Pharisee. Yeah. Like that's the new Testament. So here's the grid that I use for people that I, I really like. Um, this has been helpful for me yeah. and um, it helps guide even like me as a pastor in ministry mm-hmm. to know what, what hills to yeah. die on, so to yeah. speak. So I think there's three categories for thinking um, here. They are dogma, doctrine, and preference. Mm-hmm. So dogma, this is this like category of thinking or convictions, let's say that represent Orthodox Christian truth. Um, so I'll give you a couple examples, like the virgin birth, the Trinity, the inspiration of scripture, um, like the, the sinlessness of Jesus, right? These yeah. like, like core and they're, they're rooted in history. They show up in the creeds. They're indisputable from scripture itself. Like you cannot really let go of these without causing some major problems with, with your, either your personal theology yeah. or, or belief. So that's dogma, uh, doctrine. The, the category opens up a little bit wider. Yeah. And so let's go here. That's going to be like predestination free will. Ooh, <laughs> right? Like that's going to be like <laughs> denomination stuff. That's going to be like, okay, which version of scripture is better, right? There's a, there's some like, there's some people who want to fight over that stuff. Yeah. Um, end times stuff is, is doctrine. Um, you could even talk about like, you know, some other things like, what do we think about things like speaking in tongues? What do we think about all those, like the gifts of yeah. the spirit? Like there's yeah. a lot in this doctrine category. Okay. Third category is preference. Preference. Mm-hmm. When you look at a church, this is stuff like, do I like hymns versus choruses? Mm-hmm. Right. Which used to be the big thing in the day. I don't think, yeah. not that it's gone away, but like, that's not as big of a deal yeah. today. Yeah. Um, carpet color, um, p- different preaching styles. Um, this is just what I like, you know, I yeah. like, I like the walls painted gray. I like them green. Yeah. So dogma, doctrine, and preference. So a couple of comments about that. Um, there's very few things in the dogma category. Think about like a pyramid. Right? Yeah. Very few things in this category. Um, there, I mean, if you're looking at it, you're talking probably like a dozen, maybe. Um, but they are very, very important and mm-hmm. very, very precious. Um, things that like, this is a, 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 you shouldn't say this, but like things you would take a bullet for things you would die for things that like, yeah. Yeah. yeah like I'm, if you, t- if you, if you put a gun to my head and say, do you believe Jesus is divine? And if you do, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm like, well, okay, go. Cause yeah. yeah. You yeah. know? And then there's the doctrine category where there are more things in the doctrine category, like we said, and I, we ought to be informed about them. We, it's okay to be convicted about them. We should. Yeah. We should root our belief and our conviction in scripture, but we should hold them a little loosely. That doesn't mean flippant. It doesn't mean casual. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to defend it, yeah. but you should hold those things um, wisely and you should hold them a little more loosely. Preference. Gosh, there's, there's hundreds of things in the preference category, yeah. right? Yeah. And these are the things that you just kind of go like, do I really care? Do I really care? Um, and so, so here's kind of my, my coaching on this further is like, you need to be very clear about your, um, about your doctrine or your dogma. You need to be very clear about your dogma um, and convinced. You need to be clear about your doctrine and understand, and you just need to be honest about your preferences. And so let me get really practical. If someone's looking at North Canton Chapel and going, hey, is this the church for me? Yeah. It's okay to ask, hey, why do you guys do the music the way that you do? That's a good question. 
That's a preference question that kind of yeah. leaks up into doctrine a little bit. Yeah. Why do you guys preach the way you do? Well, okay, that that could be like a doctrine-ish question, you know. Okay. Um, what do you guys think of Jesus? I'm like, oh, okay, like yeah. let's sit down and talk. Um, you've had this experience, and this is what saddens my heart is um, a lot of times people treat preferences like dogma and dogma like preferences. Yeah. My experience is most people don't leave a church over dogma. And I want to have that fight. Not that yeah. I'm looking for controversy, yeah. but like, let's talk about what it means for Jesus to be fully man and fully God. Let's talk about what it means for the word to be inspired. Like we'll go, we'll go knuckles over that thing. Um, most people leave churches because of carpet color choices and like silly, silly things. Um, and uh, I wish it weren't that way. Uh, and I hope that we as a church are, are honest about our preferences and really, really clear about our doctrine and clear and rooted and convinced about yeah. our uh, our dogma at the top. So that's kind of, that, that's my pyramid, yeah. my grid. Like, I hope that's helpful. As no, we think and it, it is. And I think that's such a good word. And I think even in that, I think there's something about, um, yeah. And I think there's one thing where I... I mean, just by nature, like I hate conflict, I think because <laughs> like my flesh is a people pleaser. And I think as Jesus has been working to redeem me, it's really this, like, mm -hmm. I think as guys kind of been showing me this, like, I just want to invite us right to this bigger table, to this conversation. Yeah. And I think what's really hard is, um, even when, right, we, we come in contact with someone who may be right does treat that way it's yes. like as those who I, I think there are like who are genuinely striving to follow jesus mm -hmm. then maybe mm -hmm. he's still because he is working things out in all of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there's times where i think we don't know how to have these conversations mm -hmm. and be led by the spirit dude and, and i think that's 100 percent. that's what's so hard is <laughs> when you look at it even like what is the Right, the fruit of the spirit. And even we we want to stop it at verses like Galatians five, where it talks, right? Put to death, right, sexual immorality, murder or murder, lust, all those things. Yeah. And that's like, <laughs> oh, but like, right, wrath and malice and anger and that list slander. Too. <laughs> and it's like, hey, but because I have this platform or because yes. I have this understanding or this theological knowledge, I'm I going get to after say what it. I want. And so I think that's even some of that of like as yes. a church for us to recognize. As we have these, mm -hmm. I think there's this piece of being built up, um, mm. right? It really is like this being led by the spirit is not just that I grow in this like theological understanding, mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. even like in, okay, right? Proclaim, right? Proclaim Jesus. You have to use words. You have to use yeah. scripture. And I think it is like, and your words have to be Consistent. said in the way of Jesus yes. and the way of the spirit and the way of the spirit is love, joy, peace, peace patience, patience yes. kind of goodness. Um, there's a book that I read during, um, during my sabbatical and it, it's, it's one of the, it's just one of those great books. Um, I hope more people read it. I've not read, or I'm not, I don't know anybody else that has yet. So I'm like trying to find somebody who's read it. Uh, it's called the unwavering pastor leading the church with grace in divisive times. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. like that's what I need, you know? And he's got this thing where he talks about, um, Jonathan Dodson is the author. And he, it, this book is on that virtual bookshelf that we're referring to for this series. Cause there's so much here for pastors, but there's so much here for uh, church members or, or those that are curious too spiritually. So here's what he says. He's, and he, he, he relates his experience as a seminarian, as a, you know, a student, and then as a pastor. And it so much mirrors my own. Um, I'm not going to get the direct quote, right? So forgive me for that yeah. one. But um, he basically says, you know, when I was in seminary, I was taught to answer the question, is the Bible true? Do miracles happen? Um, did Jesus really rise from the dead? And those are the questions that I was taught to answer because those are the questions that I was taught people were curious about. Mm -hmm. And then he said, but often the spiritual struggles that people face aren't around those things. And he says, I sit with my friend who experienced the same sex attraction. And he goes, is God homophobic? Mm -hmm. He goes, I listen to my friend who's a person of color say, we don't just need preaching, we need justice. Mm -hmm. I sit with you know my wife who says, like, why does it seem like the church is sexist? And his insight, which I think is great, is he says, people need to know that the Bible is good, or that need to know the Bible is true. But what they're asking is, is Christianity good? Mm -hmm. Does this thing that Jesus talks about, this life that he's inviting us into, is this an actual good life? 
Does this, does this level the playing field that nobody else, like, does this fix what nobody else in society can fix? Can this do the yeah. thing that politicians can't do? And, you know, yeah. is, does Jesus actually do this? Hmm. And those are questions that I think most of us um, are either unprepared to acknowledge or answer. And we got to square with that. We've really got to sit and think with that. Like, yes, scripture is true. And we we can go to apologetics conferences and you can get it. And that's wonderful and good. But often the question is, is Christianity good? Mm. And so I hear you. Like, we we love our doctrine, our doctrine and our dogma. Like that kind of, but at the end of the day, if it's not done in a loving way, like I can be right. And if I'm not loving, I am wrong. Yeah. No matter what I believe, like I can defend the inerrancy of scripture till I'm blue in the face. But if I do it in a condescending way, I am wrong. And that is not a virtuous pursuit. Um, like that, that is a, that is something that just like, we've, we've got to figure that out. And the church historically, especially in recent memory, has not done a very good job of those things because we have, we have disconnected like embodied truth of like or embodied experience and love cultivated affection for yeah. Jesus. We've disconnected that and we've got our truth over here and we've got our life over here. And and a watching world looks at that and goes, well, which is it? I don't want to read a textbook. I want to know what yeah. you think and what you, where you are. Um, so let's pause and let's like, yeah, let's sit with that. Um, Cause yeah, if you're, if you're watching this, if you're listening, um, our, our goal was to make this a, a kind of two parter. Sure. Um, whether, whether anybody knew we were saying that or not. Um, Surprise, so, you're in for um, the long haul. <laughs> but no, this has all been mm-hmm. been really good. And I think if you are listening, um, you know, I think a- as we are sitting here, um, we're just as a church, specifically the North mm-hmm. Canton Chapel, um, whether you join us in person, whether you've just stumbled upon us online, um, you know, as we're saying, we want to be a church that makes much of Jesus every day to everyone. Um, we want to step into this to engage mm-hmm. these conversations yeah. and recognize that um, – yeah, like Jesus is good, um, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. we are not perfect. Um, he is making us perfect, and He yeah. is perfect, and He is good. And we just want to invite you along um, to just see how good He is. Um, yeah. That He is a good God. That He made a way um, that you could um, experience Him, um, be in right relationship. And so we just want to invite you along on this journey. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be be back and and dig a little bit deeper into maybe some of the nuances of of what we've been talking about. Sweet.